My name is Greg Youngblood, defensive coordinator, Olivet Nazarene University. Uh, I'd like to share some thoughts with you today on the 425 defense. In the first segment, we talked about our base defense, how we call it, uh, talked a lot about coverages and things we do out of there. Um, in this segment, I'll talk a little more about the run game, how we, uh, how we teach our linebackers, the run fits, and, uh, and if we have time, I'll get into some formation adjustments, some one back stuff, trips, and things like that. So to start with, uh, last segment, we went over our 4-2-5 against uh, 20 personnel, two backs, no tight end. So I'll just keep it here, but I'll talk a little bit about our, our run game here. And this is what we're seeing right now. So it was some of the stuff in our, against our offense. So that's kind of where my mind is. So I'll go, go with that. The first thing we teach our linebackers, um, you know, alignment. We talked about last time. They're in 30 techniques, okay, outside leg of the guards. Um, toes at four. They can be deeper if we want them, if, if that helps with the game plan. But that's where we start them. Obviously, the whip is an A-gap player primarily. The mic's a B-gap player, all right? Um, but because they're off the ball, we know that their initial gap, you know, they may not be the gap they end up scraping to, but they inevitably are in charge of those gaps first and foremost. The first thing I teach the linebackers, all right, in their reads is to read the triangle, all right? So we talk about the triangle. It's going to involve the, from the center, all right, to the guard area and to through the backfield, all right? So... For the, for the whip and the mic, they're going to each have their triangle. And the way I communicate to them is they've got to have big vision, right? They've got to be able to see those backs, but feel the linemen, all right? And an analogy a coach used to me one time I thought made sense, which I tell our players if it helps them, is when you're driving a car, you know, you don't stare at the headlights of the car in front of you, or the taillights, excuse me, you don't stare at them. You're looking two, three cars ahead, or should be, but you can feel those lights go on or you can, you can feel what that car in front of you is doing. It's the same kind of big vision we want with our linebackers where we can read everything. All right, Because we all know that linemen are going to tell the truth. All right? We know that linemen are going to they're, they're tell you where they're going. Right? They're not going to deceive you. All right? But they're let generally a slower read all right? or, or not a complete read. Whereas the backs can be a lot quicker and can, can tell you where you're going fast, but they can lie to you, right? So we, we want to get something out of both, but we, we want to get the whole picture because the whole picture is really what we need. And depending on the offense, obviously, you'll adjust your keys. But this is a great principle, I feel like, you can teach from day one that really can cover any sort of scheme you talk about. So it's not like you're teaching new reads each week to your guys. So, you know, we'll start with these, these triangle reads. And you know, the first thing we'll teach, even though we don't see it a lot anymore, and I don't know if you will or not, maybe you do more in high school, but I, I just feel like it's kind of gone out of the window, but you, you see those, those your, your basic lead schemes, right? Your ISOs and things, you're getting down blocks, right? And you're getting leads up in there, okay? So you know, that's one of the first things we read, we, we see in our direct flow is we get a down block combined with direct flow at us, and we define the flow of the backs. The direct flow is right at us, all right? Wide flow is at an angle away from us, all right? Um, fast flow is uh, obviously more lateral speed option, jet sweep, that kind of stuff. And then slow flow would be like a true triple option where we might have a dive read and a pitch read where we have a couple different concepts. So we break them down that way, and then there's counter flow as well um, we talk about. This is direct flow. Obviously, direct flow right out is the lead play. So we all know that we get uh, a down block. Anytime we get a down block, we're thinking fill right now, okay? And it, coupled with the fact that our back's coming at us, you know, that's again why we like to personnel it. He's our plugger. He's the guy that's you know, gonna have that open gap. He doesn't have to be as big. He's, not, he's protected. He's not gonna get as much of the stuff at him. All right, the mic will. So this is our bigger body guy. We tell him, obviously, we wanna close the gap now and we're gonna blow that thing up. We tell him, go right off the butt of that guard blocking down. We don't want any space between, when he blocks down that nose, we don't want any space between you and that, and that butt of that guard right there. All right, we want to hug it tight, all right? They want the ball to get north-south. They want to get in that tube, all right? So we want to make sure we close that sucker up, all right? Now, I know some people, and I, I've taught this, used to teach, you know, the mic to box everything, right? Take it on with that inside arm and leg, maybe get a little wider, turn the ball back to the linebacker, the backside linebacker. And, and that's fine, and we can, you can do that. The, the, what I like about this is it allows our whip, who's more of an active player anyway, he's our guy that tend, tends to lead our team in tackles because he is protected, he can scrape and make plays. We want to allow him to play fast. So by getting him over the top, getting him tight right here, that ball, if he does his job, if anything's gonna, gonna you know, spill to that, you know, it's, it's still the B gap, but it's gonna get a little wider. Now if our end does his job, on a base block, we all know we step in with our, you know, our, our near hand, our near foot's back, our near hand's down, and we step in that base block and we feel that pressure, we're gonna, we should be squeezing. 
right? We gotta, we gotta keep our leverage, our shoulders square and keeping our gap, but we wanna squeeze the sucker down. And if we do a great job, he may not, there may not be room to get through there anyway, all right? But even if there is some room on that, all right, that's where I'm Mike, all right, in his flow, all right, and obviously with this scheme here, we're probably getting, you know, a double, we're getting a double team, we're probably getting just some cutoff blocks here, that way, the, could they block everything back? They could, all right, they could use a true gap scheme, but a lot of times they're gonna leave this guy go, and they're just gonna try to get people up, all right? So once he sees the, 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 it's a really more of a zone read him stepping down or if he saw a gap read either way blocking back but he gets the flow away right that tells him it's flow away his job is to stack to the heels of the next adjacent lineman he's got to get there right now why because obviously that guard is trying to cut him off and it would be the same in a zone scheme which I'll get to in a minute but he's getting the heels right now now right now he's looking to what I tell our guys it's clear or cloudy all right you got a clear window or you got a cloudy window I don't want to get them too complicated if you got a clear window, you take it. If you got a cloudy window with bodies in there, then you can scrape, all right, over the top. So obviously our nose, if he's doing a good job on a double team, he's gonna be throwing his hip, he's gonna be anchoring it down. He, his job is to beat this center and not let the center reach him and make that guard have to stay on him. If the guard comes off quick and he beat, his, beat the center, well, he should be in there hopefully making a tackle as well. But obviously most of the time, they're gonna anchor that double team first that allows our whip to scrape over top. Well, if our mic did his job and fills that sucker and our nose has got a pile there, his natural scrape lane takes him right there. And that's where he'll make a lot of those tackles. So instead of the mic boxing it back to the whip, we have the mic fill it right now, play aggressive, tight off the butt, and the mic and the whip can make him right and scrape. If the mic gets too late, loose and he gets kicked, well, the, that'll mean there'll be a clear window right there. The whip should fit him. The whip's going to make him right. But that's how we would approach that and take it. Obviously, we still have people out here getting the heels. If we're to bounce, he can't. We tell him not to get too deep to spur, get the heels the end. If the ball does fall inside and we mess up in here, he can still fall in late. He is still a force player, edge player, so he's got to fall in late. But he's in a. He doesn't want to. We don't want him to get up a line of scrimmage where he can't fold in. We want him to get to the heels. The ball bounces. Boom! I got leverage. If the ball folds inside. Boom! I can collapse. So I got extra people. All right. So we'll. That's how we'll play. Uh, direct flow, more of a lead, more of an ISO play uh, to the strong side. All right. Now let's talk about direct flow with more of a zone scheme, okay? A lot of the principles don't change. We'll just keep the same basic concept, okay? We're still in our, oops, sorry, the shades on the strong side. We're still in our same uh, defensive look here. All right, so now what we see a lot is we'll see a zone scheme, right? And, and they can do a couple different things, right? They can slice it, bring this guy back to block the backside in and run zone to their left, to our right. They can try to dig him out and run zone this way. So that's again where our triangle helps us. All right, our triangle helps us, all right? So um, we're here um, and we know that we get these reads right here. So let's just go, uh, let's just go zone to the, our right, okay? He's gonna step, zone up, zone, step, zone, and then they slice, bring the backside guy there, all right? And so what, you know, different teams will do it differently, but a lot of times he's just gonna come front side. If he sees a crease, he's gonna take it. If not, he's got to cut back anywhere in there, okay? So we know a basic zone scheme. So nothing really changes. Now we're in our gaps. So we step up. Now we see that zone, right? And I try to differentiate our linebackers so they can see the difference. A lineman who steps lateral, but he's got his shoulders square. If the if a lineman is stepping, or even inside, if it was inside zone, shoulders are square. The play before the lead scheme where, the, where the, the guard turned his shoulders, that's a down block, we know that's a fill it right now. But we know when they're lateral one way or the other, that's a zone scheme, all right? Nothing really changes as far as knowing my gap. I step with my foot to my gap. That's what I tell these guys. Their first step is always going to be a short punch step to my gap. So if I'm a Mike linebacker right here, I know I'm B gap by alignment. So my first, when that ball snapped, I'm just going to take a short punch step to my gap. And then from there, I can react left. Okay, I might take one, two and react right, but I'm gonna react to where the ball flows, but I want that first step, right foot, right foot, because my gap's A gap, that's where they're stepping. Once he sees flow, he sees zone this way, he knows his job is to fill his gap with leverage, all right? So that guard has to step out, he should be taking him on, and should have okay, his headgear on his outside, making sure he is showing color in the hole and forced to cut back. Obviously the end is getting a reach block, He's doing the same thing. As he steps, we teach as you step, stab and grab, and you feel that, that lemon stepping out. We're gonna widen, okay? 
We're going to push, pull, keep our feet running. Don't let him turn his shoulders. We're going to win the edge right here. Okay, set the edge, set the edge. So if they do their job, that ball should always cut back on the zone. That's what they're looking for. All right? The nose, same thing. All right? He's stepping to the V of the neck of the center. Center zone steps to him. He should be stretching, staying front side in his A gap. Everything's moving. The ball should continue to cut back if we do it right. Now it goes back to what we talked about before, the, the whip. He sees flow away. Zone and ball goes away. Zone away. He's getting to the heels and nose right now. It's so important he gets there. Why? Because if he hangs back, this guard okay, is going to get to us. Right? We, we should hopefully help, help our tackle. Our three technique slows him down. But at some point, that guy, he's on scholarship too. Okay? He's going get, to get flat. He's going to get his shoulders parallel. He's going to get climb up to us. We have to be a better athlete than him. We get our reads. Boom, get the heels and nose guard. That's what we tell him. Now he reads clear cloudy. And this is where, it's, this is where I think the, the importance of it is. If the nose guard does his job, and he doesn't get reached, and he stays in that A-gap, his front side A-gap will naturally fit right off his butt, and we're in our backside A-gap. That's where we are. But the key is we beat that guard. Okay? We got in our gap. So he's forcing the cut back. It cuts right back to our A-gap. Now that guard might wash us. He might try to go get us. He'll wash us past. But we're still, if we're fitting up in there, it's going to be a tough block. But, he's going to, but still, we're going to make the ball continue to bounce back if we do it. All right? That's, but that's by getting there right now and beating that guard and then getting that spot. Now, here's where I tell our linemen, we don't want to get reached, right? Nobody wants to get reached, right? So we work on it. But getting reached isn't my worst fear, okay? What we do with our front four, we have to do on down blocks or zone away schemes, is we have to squeeze the back shoulder, all right? And that's one of the hardest things for our guys to do. I know when I coached high school, guys want to, defensive line want to run up field, they want to get their eyes in the backfield, they don't want to read their blocks. That's the hardest thing you got to coach, and you got to coach the most often, is stepping into your man if you're an outside shade, getting your hands on him, and then as he's releasing inside, whether it be a veer scheme inside or a zone scheme away, you continue to drive and collapse him and squeeze that back shoulder. All right? That's so important because it helps keep him off the of linebackers and it helps take away those cutback lanes. All right? So if we don't do that, if we're up the field, boom, they're going to cut it back Okay, anywhere. But here's why that's more important than being reached. All right? Because if our defensive linemen get reached, I tell them, stay reached, but keep fighting through your man because the linebacker will make you right. And I put it on the linebackers, yes, you have your initial gap, but once you stack, your clear cloudy rule will tell you where to go. And, and, if this, and this is the example right here. Let's say our nose gets reached. Let's say they hook him right there. All right? Well, I'm stacking to his heels, I have backside A gap. Well, once I get to his heels, I'm, I see his body is now in that gap because he got reached. So I can't get into my gap because he's standing right there because he got reached. He didn't get over the top like he was supposed to. Well, what's my rule? Cloudy, scrape. So now, boom, I'm right here. All right? I end up playing the front side A gap. He's in the back side A gap. We're still center our fits. So that's why I urge those D linemen, it's not the end of the world if you get reached because we got linebackers to make it right. It is if you will not play if you're, if you're not squeezing those down blocks. That's, that's the biggest thing I talk to them. And it's still a process, a project we got to work. But that's what my linebackers got to work on, making the D lineman right if they get reached or if they don't get reached, filling the clear window, scraping if it's cloudy. All right, so that's, that's how we'll play that. And then again, on the back side, if he's zoning away, I should be squeezing his hip. If I squeeze his hip, not only am I flattening his release and keeping him, helping him off the linebacker, I'm also keeping the tackle from reaching me. If I shoot up the field or if I step outside instead of stepping in, yeah, this guy's going to cut me. This guy's going to cut me off. And that's all they're looking for. They're, all, they're looking for me to get overtaken, and even if we do our job, boom, that ball hits right there. And we all know it doesn't bend back like that, right? It gets washed, and it's, it's like that, and it's north-south right now. That's what they're looking for. So we have to constantly keep squeezing, constantly force that ball to keep uh, bending back, okay? So I, I race some of these lines. I'm going to keep it. My rush in, same thing. He should be squeezing so tight. As this slice block comes, he should spill it. To him, he's treating it like a, like a trap play, right? So he, he sees zone away. Boom, he's squeezing, squeezing, here comes that trap lock. Boom, wrong arm it, get underneath it, square back up. We want to spill it, okay? Make this ball, so this ball can't go, can't go, can't go, can't go. It has to go all the way back here if we do our job. All right, that's what they should be doing. That's where then it comes back to our run support. Obviously, if we're any sort of wide split, we're in sky run support, he gets run away, we tell our safety, take a J path, all right? J path, you're down, down, down. Even though it looks like the ball's going away, you're with leverage, if that ball bounces, you should have an open field tackle right there.
okay? That ball does break inside. You're in a J-path. Now you clean up this way, all right? But that's your J-path, and you don't go till you know, all right? That ball, you have to always keep leverage on the football. That means your inside shoulder pad should always be behind the ball, all right? So as it keeps climbing away from you, okay, I can work that way, but keeping it behind me, if it comes back to me, I should be in perfect leverage right here because we're locked up a man over here in a sky call, okay? So that's how we want to play the zone. Obviously, either side would be the same, all right? Anytime we, we, we teach these principles, they should apply uh, wherever we're at, all right? So that's our, that's our run game, inside run, direct flow, okay? The only thing that would change is we get to some other schemes. So we get like outside zone, no big deal. You know, we're getting this kind of stuff. Okay, where they're trying to get that ball wide. Basically, the alignment is all the same. The only difference for our linebackers is we got to mirror the angle of those backs. All right? So it's it, outside zone, inside zone, we're not going to be able to tell the difference of the alignment. Right? Yeah, their steps probably made a little wider and those sorts of things, uh, you know, bucket steps. But in a flow of a game, you're, you're going to just see the shoulders flat and you're going to see them moving. But this is where the back seeing the triangle helps us because we see the same look from alignment on a zone but we see that they're flatter. So now we can be flatter, all right? Mirror the angle of the back. And you can drill that. You can just put there. I, I drill all the time where I put, you know, I put my linebacker. And, and even though this is in our structure, if I just want to do one at a time, I'll just put a back back there. He's at four yards. And I'll give him different looks. So I'll just do zone this way and have him run. And he's got to fit, okay? And I can put bags for like D linemen. And they just have to, they have to get to their heels because that's what we tell them, right? I'm just mispracticing their angles. I'm not worried about, you know, scraping clear cloudy right now. The next time I might go wide flow, now they got to scrape wider, okay? I can just do that with one. I can do it with the two in the box, do the same, you know, the same structure and do it, all right? I can also do a gap scheme, okay, a counter scheme, which we haven't got to, but it's basically the same, right? Down, down, oop, down, down, kick, all right? And maybe some sort of counter flow. We're going to maybe step, oh. See our triangle, if we see our triangle now, if there was one backer in the box, that's his triangle. In your triangle, you see down and you see flow. That may get you stick, stepping this way, but then as your big picture, you see somebody cross your path in that triangle, coming back, boom, rocker step and you go, okay? So that's, that's a drill we do, just a three man in the box to help those reads, angle the backs, you know, all those kinds of things, all right? So that's how we would play, you know, uh, some sort of counter scheme. All right, so if we got, you know, we got that, you know, you know they're going to go back, back, right? They're going to go the backside backer, all right? They're going to kick the end, all right? And then depending on how they're doing it with the back or line, you know, counter tray, they'll fold up, something like that, okay? So we get, that's the, you know, we've seen everything else. Maybe we get, um, you know, our back, you know, they probably put the back over here and let them seal the backside, you know, but it looks like this, and they cut it back, okay? Some sort of counter scheme. So, you know, same principle apply. I see down block, I'm feeling right now, okay? And that, I tell them a pull and a down block basically override anything the backs do, all right? So even though I see flow away, if his shoulders are turned and he's coming down, I feel it. Now, if his shoulders were square and he was zoning up, well, that would tell me to stack to the heels because that's zone, all right? So we, we got to, that's, that's where that, um, that lineman will tell us the truth and the backs are lying to us. So we see down block, we actually, we want to fill it right now, to fill that B gap, okay? What should happen here in an ideal world is if our ends do their job and they're squeezing, as we get a veer release, we should flatten his release out down here so he has a hard time getting to the backside backer. And we should be in position to obviously spill that and blow it up. My mic, I just teach him, hey, you fill it, but if he's doing his job and he's getting that window, he's going to see cloudy. He will naturally scrape outside, okay? So that's, that's an ideal world. The end's doing his job. We don't always get that. As much as I harp on it, you know, our ends are, you know, here, in, you know, they, they, they sometimes get it, sometimes don't. Same scheme. He come down. He's a little late. He does, it takes a bad first step. He's outside. He's trying to turn and get there, but he's getting there late. He's getting kicked, all right? Well, my linebacker's rule didn't change. You saw a down block, you're filling. You see open window, you fill it right now. So again, we're making him right. I don't tell him that. I tell him you better get down in there. But we know that may not always happen. So he's going to fill it. And it, we end up basically just trading places, right? One of us is going to be an inside spill guy. One of us is going to be more of the, the, the extra guy, okay? So that's how we'll play it front side. Back side, 
Pulling guard. Again, he sees his triangle. None of this matters because a pulling guard and a down block override anything. So as soon as he sees this right here, he should be gone right now, and he's looking to get over the top, and he's looking to scrape. All right, now if our end does his job and flattens the release of this tackle down here, well, then it's easy for him to scrape over the top. Mike stepped up. He can fit wherever is needed, clear cloudy. Okay, when it's hard, okay, is when that end doesn't do his job, and we get a clear release right to that whip, all right, and get ear hold right there. So that's why, though, if he gets a quick read here and he sees his puller, he knows it's coming. He's ready to get over top. And I tell him, we, we drill that a lot where we get over top. We work on swatting rip and dipping those shoulders. You know, if he's climbing really high on our shoulder, we might be able to dip underneath. That's, that's the exception, obviously. That's not how we should be taught day one. That's not what they should do. But once we've beaten these guys over the top enough all day long, their coach starts telling them to climb higher on their shoulder, we got to have a counter because we can't, we can't, can't do too much. We can give a little ground, but if we have to give too much because they're climbing high, now we can get underneath them and go. And a good athlete can do that. Again, we like this whip to be our, our dude that can run and can make plays because he he's more athletic than that tackle. Again, if this guy can do his job and just squeeze the heck out of that guy, we got clean releases all day long. All right, so that's what we tell this whip on this. So that counter play, it comes back. Either the end spilling it or the mic filling it, we should get the ball to bounce. And the whip, again, he's getting over top, clear cloudy. But again, we want him to stay inside the football. He's an inside out player, leverage. So that ball goes out here, he should be pressing through the inside hip. Don't let the cutback happen. If we've done the spill job and the ball's bouncing, he's got to know. Now remember, this is on our <coughs> spur side, right? We, he's always forced, so he's stepping up with outside leverage, so he's got anything bouncing there, all right, outside. So we can't get him over the top and let them run underneath us. We've got to make sure we fill that window inside out, he fills outside in, and we're good. We talk about compression, we practice compression tackle all day long with an inside out player, an outside in player, and we, we just drill it. We put the cones down, put a ball carrier, put a line of guys, have them say go, sprint. Now we, we progress on this, we maybe start with them in the position, but when they get to that cone, they should have their inside foot out, outside foot back, and they should just shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Okay, keeping the inside foot up, outside foot back. Inside foot, outside foot back. I've got leverage here, I've got leverage here. He can make one cut. Wherever he cuts, I should fit him up with my head on the outside. I should squeeze the backside hip, staying square, take away the cut back, all right? But they gotta learn a transition from a run to a breakdown. So we'll start them broken down, just have them do that drill. Then we'll move them back and have them run and tell them they break down. When he gets the cone, they get the cone, he starts. And they should have that perfect fit, shoulder to shoulder, good wrap, head on the football, head outside, head on the back shoulder. That's the same tackle we're getting here. All right, so we work on that and we get that compression tackle. But if we know our angles, we know our keys, reading our triangle, read clear cloudy, defensive lineman squeeze, spill, those are the fundamentals we want in our run game to be great um, and take care of business. So hopefully you got something out of that. Um, if there's more that questions you have, feel free to email me anytime. Come by our college. We're always happy to talk football. If you guys do something similar and you've got ideas, we like to learn from you too. So thanks for your time. Appreciate you listening.